first of all, um, my name is James McKnight, I'm from Brown and Ortiz, and I'm here representing the property owner for 803 North Cherry, Mitch Meyer. Um, I just want to start off by telling everybody I do apologize for the late start. Um, the architects were, were here, but we, we wanted to run the program off of our computer. It was not the fault of St. Phillips that this late start occurred, it is, it is our fault, so I do apologize for that late start. Um, but we're ready to go now, so I hope that um, we can all have a good discussion here tonight. Um, this was organized by uh, Councilman Shaw to discuss the proposed project for 803 North Cherry. As many of you know, it had gone before the HRC in uh, on uh, December 6th of last year, and the the proposal at this time is to move forward with a, a new design. So I just wanted to start off with a few introductions. Like I said, my name is James McKnight. Mitch Meyer is the property owner. Um, the new architecture firm that we brought on, we've got uh, Javier Gonzalez and Arlo Reyes from GRG Architecture, and they'll speak a little bit later about the actual design features, which is really the primary focus of our presentation tonight. But there are other things that we would like to get to, and I know that people want to discuss. So I'm going to be doing some presenting, but mainly I am the moderator this evening. So I'm going to talk about a couple items and ask for input on those items, and then we'd like to move on to the next item so that we can get to the, the focus of the meeting, which is the design. So for those of you who don't know, I just want to give a background of how this process got to where we are. The property 803 in North Cherry is zone D for downtown, which means it is an entitled piece of property. However, it requires um, needing the downtown design guide. So the downtown design guide is a set of guidelines that are about making a sustainable and walkable downtown. And for that judgment, we go to HDRC, the Historic Design Review Commission, to see whether or not we meet those guidelines. We submitted a project last year. It went to HDRC on December 6th. It was a long hearing, and at the end of it, HDRC denied our certificate of appropriateness. And they said we did not meet the guidelines. So we regrouped and we brought in a new architecture firm and we started from scratch. We started using the comments that were made by HDRC, those things from the design guidelines and those things from the neighborhood. Um, coming up is not on an agenda as of yet. I want everybody to understand that this coming Wednesday, on February 7th, it is on the HDRC's agenda to schedule a meeting. So we don't have a meeting time yet. The resubmittal was submitted this last Friday, so it has officially been resubmitted the design. And it will be scheduled on this coming Wednesday to which date, I'm not sure yet, but that is the date that HDRC will discuss. So just to be clear, it will be heard on Wednesday. It will not be heard on Wednesday. That is just for them to, to pick a time. That has to officially be on the agenda. So in anticipation of that, we were, before we actually submitted, one thing that you can do as part of the HDRC process is request feedback from those commissioners. And that's called a design review committee. And we had a design review committee with three of those HDRC members on January 11th. Just some of the initial feedback just to say we're headed in the right direction. So we're not doing this in a vacuum, but that was, uh, that was a meeting held a few weeks back. And you know, they gave us some good directions to the feedback. Um, prior to that DRC meeting, just a few days prior, I wanted to point out that the Office of Historic Preservation, and with the help of the City Attorney's Office, has sent a letter to all of the HDRC members. And this is important for, for everybody to understand because this was coming not from us, the developers, but coming from the City Attorney's Office and Historic Preservation. That the, in that letter, it said to the HDRC members, the focus is on design. I know there are a lot of charged issues around the site, but the focus is on design. They said, scale, mass, and setbacks, those items are the, under the purview of HDRC, but whether or not there's a pending lawsuit, high restrictions, and environmental concerns, specifically in the letter, it says these are not under the purview of HDRC. So those are things that we can discuss in a public hearing but it is not under the HDRC's purview to vote yes or no on the project on those items. So that is the first 
that's the first part of tonight's presentation. I just want to see if anybody had questions on those items before we move to the next piece. Yes, ma'am. So, Mayor, I understand you want to roll the HDRC. You're opening the floor, or are you on the I'm opening the floor on, on this portion, so I'd like to, there's a few details about the environmental concerns and about purchasing the property. I can go through everything first and then open the floor up. And then I'd like to talk about design after that. But I, I want to make sure that we separate those issues that we're, we're really trying to discuss at a time here. So I can talk through some of the points on the environmental and property sale. And then we can open it up to the floor. Uh, or if you have a question. Did you create the agenda? <laughs> with the with the health of the council's office. Well, how does the council's office feel about that? Sorry? Going with that first? But some of those questions would probably be deferred to you anyway, right? Yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and look at those presentations first. Sure. Okay. Yeah, my only concern is I went to the meeting of at the beer company back in whatever you had yeah. that last meeting. And you know, it's just a very contentious issue. Right. And I also wanted to say that I was hoping that you would open up this conversation because several of us came to you asking for this meeting. Had we not approached you, this meeting may not be taking place. And so, you know, I mean, I would actually ask you to still come up here and, and, and you know, invite us to this conversation um, because it feels, I feel that the power dynamic is off and that we don't have the same equal opportunity, that it's just them getting to, you know, move forward and, you know, the city of attorney already is approving all of it, you know, so it's already going off in the wrong tension and it makes people more Okay, so. now, um, let me just clarify a few things. Can y'all hear me with that microphone? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Clarify a few things. In terms of the bullet points that we have on the agenda, those are the takeaways that we have from our meeting. We, we want to four specific takeaways. Those same takeaways are the exact same things I know I asked my office to look into, it's going to be on, the, on today's agenda. So in terms of buying the property back, the environmental concerns, the design, as well as uh, one more. Uh, those what was it? Well, having a town hall off-site, not at the location, but somewhere neutral, where folks can come in and feel comfortable giving their opinions. So we want to organize this. We want to hear from you guys. We're, my office is here to make sure that we take notes and hear what you have to say. But I want to make sure that y'all see, y'all get your answers, your questions answered. That's the, the primary purpose of this meeting. And we may have several of them. This may not be the only one. Okay? Because like, like uh, Mr. Spring Knight said, it's not on the agenda yet. So we continue to have conversations, but it's really important that we create this dialogue and understanding of what we're discussing. So once you complete the next three or four event items, if you have further questions regarding the sale of the property, or the environmental concerns, then we can kind of dive into those two from our office. Right, and so, you know, uh, Councilman Shaw's office said these are the concerns. And so, yes, I represent the developer and I'm presenting, but I'm presenting and saying these are the concerns, we can address them, and of course we can still talk about them, have a discussion about them. So, like you said, uh, the next item was environmental concerns, whether or not the site has been evaluated for contamination. I can tell you that yes, it is. We have a phase two site assessment that was done on the property in 2005 for purposes of transferring the land from Dawson's to the city. This was done for the city in order for them to purchase the property. And the assessment is that the site is clean. This is not a public document. This is a document that was, that was we used in order to acquire the property in 2016, but it was given to the city in 2005. Um, I think other folks have tried to track this down through the, the city channels and, and un, un, unable to find it, but it wasn't the city's possession from 2005 until it was the property was transferred in 2014. Um, Hold on. Are we waiting? Are we open questions, James? Tell me well, what. It, home, home questions, I'd just like to get to just okay. the, the items and the facts of, about this report. So. <coughs> As I said, there were borings done on the site. They were tested for contamination. The site is clean. But I am not legally allowed to distribute that document and make that doc document public. 
but and we were not, I can assure you, we were not able to purchase the land in 2016 from uh, Eugene Seymour to us in 2016 unless the bank had seen that report and seen that it was clean. But beyond that, there are there is oversight from the TCEQ. The city may not have the purview for the phase two site assessment, but TCEQ does. So if there are concerns, that's for TCEQ to take up. And it's important to point out that as I started the meeting with, this is a design review. It is not about environmental concerns and whether or not HDRC approves the project for design purposes. It's something the citizens may be concerned about. I understand that, but it's not a design concern. The next item I'd like to discuss is whether or not the, the city could acquire the property from Mr. Meyer. And I tell you, it's something that had been discussed at one point, but it's not a feasible option for us. This is a piece of property that was purchased for the purposes of developing the site. It's an entitled piece of property, and it was entitled to, to build a downtown property, not a park. And so we bought it for that purpose. The land is not for sale at this time, and we've spent a significant amount of money investing in that property, not just purchasing it, but in architecture and attorneys to try to to get the approvals from HDRC to now continue forward. So at this time, it's not a feasible option. It, it was discussed, um, and the council of the office approached us and said that it was something that we could be important to people. We understand that. It's not for sale at this time. Um, the design changes, I'll let um, you know, Javier and Lola go through those. But before we start on the design, I just want to see if there are a few any questions at this point. Otherwise, I'd like to turn it over to Javier and let him describe to you how we're trying to address all these HDRC concerns. Yes, sir. Yeah, the property was bought, but then there was a grant given back to the property owner on that same value. So they didn't really lose any money in that situation. So how much, based on the value of just your operational costs, that's what you really should be analyzing as in the cost of the You're describing a different property owner. That wasn't us. That's, that's you're, just, you're describing something, a transaction between the city and Eugene Seymour's company. Yeah. That was in 2014. That was your lease. 20, no, 2016, the property was then purchased by a different company. That's us. So what you're describing is not what has taken place for us. But you know the amount of money that he's now invested in, I couldn't, I couldn't really pull a finger on that. Yes. I don't like this because I did not have um, because I want to respect that the design is part of the reason that we call the meeting. So we're going to add factors in how we're delivering this. But going back to you, the environmental assessment and how that impacts the greater community is the reason it ever came up is there's no stock gaps in there now because it doesn't have to go through zoning. You, we alluded to this document that was done in 2005 and it's absolutely necessary for your bench, but no city official can find that. And if you're alluding to the document that took place in 2005 with regards to the Hay Street Bridge and the putting underneath, I need clarification that that also included a Oak Ridge North Cherry. You can't put a spoon in the ground until we know it's safe for people. And this, I can assure you it was done is a little too shrouded to me. I, I am sorry that it seems too shrouded to you, but... Would it be to you if I came to you that way? I would ask you to visit with TCEQ and the permitting department to determine whether or not okay. that's a problem. Not, that's, okay. But not HDRC. I'm wondering about the design is a problem. Just real quick, regarding that issue, my office has reached out to TCEQ regarding any issues. And we've also been informed that before anything breaks ground, there has to be an environmental study done. So we can't just start breaking ground and building without a, a test being done. So there has been a 2005 study, um, and nothing has been developed on that property since then. But if, if this, if, if HRC approves this, okay, and groundbreaking begins, they're going to have to pull the permits, which one is requiring an environmental study. So it will be done, and our office is reaching out to people, has reached out to TCU. Regarding this problem. Thank you, sir. Oh. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Javier Gonzalez. I'm the 
Jerry Garcia. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the councilman for organizing the meeting. Thank uh, St. Phillips for hosting us, and thank you all for being here. Uh, this is an important project. Uh, a little bit, a little bit about GRG. Uh, we're a small firm here in downtown San Antonio. I have been working. Uh, each of us been working for many years uh, in the profession, and uh, I myself uh, am a former uh, member of the HCRC. I was chair for five years. I've served on the commission here for eight years. Uh, and this is back in 2004 or so. And I remember it, it, we couldn't even imagine this sort of community input, interest, whatever, uh, for, for a project on, uh, in the near east side. This is wonderful. The things we're here to talk about today, the reasons you're here, all somehow becomes uh, a better project. As the saying goes, iron sharpens iron. Well, we've been certainly put to task here uh, by Mitch Meyer, the project leader. Uh, he's been uh, all the developer. I don't think that's a fair uh, way to characterize Mitch. He's from San Antonio, he has deep roots, and he's an investor in the east side. He doesn't develop properties and sell them. He owns them forever. Thing. And so uh, the firm has been hard at work. And uh, if you bear with me, I'll go through my presentation. Uh, we did bring a live 3D model, but because of technical difficulties, we can't, we can't get through it. So we'll, we'll do the best we can with this uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, but as the, the title slide said, this is a new day, a new design. Uh, and, and so the purpose of this meeting is to, in the spirit of collaboration, Kind of find that common ground, you know, really distill from the neighborhood you know, what is needed, really, really reach, reach uh, into those design guides uh, that the city has. You know, they're there for a purpose to develop a really, really good urban building. And of course, to get your feedback. I will uh, qualify uh, that this uh, is preliminary. We're still working, it's still soft. Uh, we originally reached out to the vendor of uh, the architecture committee uh, uh, three weeks ago or so. It was really early. And so we're, it's like concrete, it's starting to set. We really need that feedback sooner or later. Uh, but in general, you'll see a strong observance of the comments that were shared uh, the last time uh, from the ARC and from the community, as well as from HGRC and, and others that we've uh, spoken with. Uh, so, so certainly uh, the project approach. Mitch, uh, our project leader, said, hey guys, you got to really, really make this a, a great project. My name is on it. This is my own town. Uh, I, I'm investing in, in, in the near east side. I have strong, strong faith that this is tomorrow's you know, main urban center. And so with that, you know, he, he's saying, hey, basically, I'll paraphrase it. Listen to the community. Make a great project. Let's do something worthy of the neighborhood, something memorable, something that will bring people together, not drive them apart. Uh, and, and so you know, some goals and objectives that we've outlined for the project is to create a mixed use uh, apartment housing with a preponderance of units that are on the bottom of the market uh, scale in terms of cost. So therefore, the units are very small, efficient, tight, urban. Uh, establish a strong Cherry Street urban development precedent for the near east side as a dense, vibrant edge condition that welcomes all. The third one is to contribute to the development of available system of, of livable, uh, livable, walkable, sustainable community. Uh, there's some things that we uh, uh, certainly endeavor to as new design guides. Uh, and the last thing to create open space slash pocket park next to the city property near the bridge in observance of the National District Historic Bridge. Uh, where previously there had been uh, the idea that it would be a future site uh, for a restaurant, that's no longer the case. Uh, Mitch has uh, spent a little bit more of his money uh, to buy that land from Eugene to contribute that open space as the amenity open space for the development, which is open to the public. Uh, with the hopes that ideally, with the council's leadership, uh, there would be an under the bridge development that would be seamlessly working together. So it's safer, it's, it's, it's bigger, it's friendlier, it's open, all those sorts of things. So ground rules, uh, we're looking at uh, urban apartment typologies and precedents. You know, what are the best practices? What are the best uh, building types that are out there? Uh, historic uh, considerations. We're next to the Woody Hill Historic District. We've got the bridge, etc. Uh, we want to look and consider the present day context. Uh, certainly, the city downtown design guide and the previous comments from before, and of course, what we hear tonight. And so, just to make it clear, things that we're not doing, we're not saving the basic lot for a future restaurant. We're not connecting to the bridge. 
We're not limiting access to the fridge. We're not putting tables and chairs in there. All those things that have been uh, discussed in the past. Uh, we're not building too close to the bridge. Uh, we're not exposing parking to the street. Uh, we're not pushing parking uh, into the neighborhood. Uh, and, you know, very much comes from this meeting, we intend to add that to the list here. Uh, so, uh, present typology, we're really looking for a vibrant, first class, nicely done, nicely designed, durable building that, that resonates uh, and is imbued with the, the culture and architectural heritage of the area. Uh, you know, speaking of the history, you know, the project site is, is one that uh, it, we went back and looked at when the viaduct, uh, the bridge was uh, installed in 1910. Uh, it was for a purpose to get across the tracks to connect downtown and the neighborhood just, uh, just east of Cherry. And so we had buildings in close proximity, uh, large buildings, warehouse buildings, not apartment buildings, not tall buildings like that, but large buildings nonetheless. Uh, right in proximity to, to the bridge, uh, just like that. And so uh, we even have, uh, up to 1971, we know that was the case. Handy Andy had a warehouse uh, in proximity to the bridge, and you can see some of the structures there. Uh, we're not sure what's happened. We did uh, talk to the Office of Historic Preservation to find out what happened to these buildings. Did they get demolished, or did they burn down, what happened? We don't know yet. So if anyone happens to have the rest of that story, uh, please visit with me later. Uh, so the bridge itself uh, was a wonderful uh, uh, practical uh, uh, thing at the time, but we, we've now come to admire its beauty, the iconic views that we now enjoy, but let's not make, uh, uh, let's not confuse history. Those views that we enjoy now, they're not historic views. Uh, we want to do our best to, within the constraints of this project, to frame the views and keep those open view sheds uh, as much as we can but not to the point where they would preclude the, the project, uh, for sure. Uh, as the project was restored by Patrick Sparks, uh, the approaches to the bridge uh, were deemed too far gone, so those got replaced completely. And they had previously been 30 feet wide, they're now 15 feet wide. So what that tells us is the bridge was even cozier to its neighboring buildings in its historic period of significance. Uh, that, that just being said, that, that's the history. Uh, we can. We can certainly do better and respect the bridge, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, current context, uh, of course, you know the site, I hope. Uh, it's the open field and some industrial buildings and so forth. A positive negative study shows that uh, along Cherry, to the west, we have the larger industrial buildings. To the east, we have the smattering of, of the homes and so forth in their own scale and uh, proximity and relationship. And certainly, uh, you know, we've got the bridge. And it's restoration and wonderful things that are happening because of that interest and hard work in the bridge. We've got the Alamo Brewery, which is bringing attention and, and commerce into the area. Certainly we have the, the, the bond of money we have to improve the parks nearby. These are all things that, that factor into you know, the way we need to look at the, the site. Uh, we've got the Crockett Street Loft, which is a great project uh, just blocks away from this site. Uh, I will point out that there is not any planned retail in that building. So it's not a mixed use building. Uh, even something as simple as getting sidewalks, which was, I understand, a feat in and of itself on Cherry. Uh, and uh, we can, of course, uh, go without observing and acknowledging all the preservation work happening in the neighborhood. It's wonderful. And so with that, we want to show you the preliminary design and then go through these tenants uh, one by one as prescribed for by the design, uh, design guideline. Uh, so here you see a, a rather different building, but it has some of the similar DNA uh, as the, the previous one. We've pulled it away, and where you're seeing a, a pocket park green space, that was previously a, a placeholder for a, a building, a restaurant. We've since pulled that restaurant into the building. We've got uh, different massing. We've got masonry up to a, a certain level, related to the smaller buildings across the street, and so forth. Uh, we've got a interplay of the fenestration, which was actually the idea of one of the city commissioners. Said, well, related to the across the street and, and where the windows are and the patterns and so forth. So we, we took that as an opportunity to break from the rigid marching of the architecture and make it more lyrical. Uh, we, we also have reduced the girth 
of the project. There was a podium uh, previously across the entire side. We pulled it back. We got up before, but in going in pulling it back, we have. And we'll make some of these uh, images available, so you don't have to take a picture. Uh, and, and so what we did was we tried to pull the building, being four stories, away from the bridge. And you'll see here in just a minute uh, where, where it's closest to the bridge, we restricted the one story with a roof deck on top of that. Hard to see here, but we'll get to some better images in just a second. So where we're closest to the actual trussle of the bridge, it's, it's down to one story, and that's where the restaurant will be. Uh, and open on the public space. So with that, we're looking at the downtown design guide, and it's got a whole list of things. That some apply, some don't. Uh, the, the downtown design guide says, hey, look at these and use your best judgment. They don't all uh, apply. Certainly, if, if we skip one and you think differently, you'll let us know. Uh, but for example, the river walk, that, that doesn't apply to this, it's just the river walk. So uh, with that, um, it also says that the focus has to do with the relationship of the building and the street. How the building talks to the community. You know, that's really the focus of it. Uh, in fact, the, the downtown design guide uh, that was put together by Mark Broder, a planner, he had a section with his uh, downtown guide, design guide and kind of points all the different parts of these uh, uh, sidewalks and setbacks to start with. Uh, you can see in this overall view, we uh, pulled the building into the site to accommodate parallel parking. A row of the five foot by five foot tree breaks that we use. We've got uh, an eight foot sidewalk, so we're really, really making this a complete street uh, for all modes of, of, of transportation and to make this a place. If not for cars, uh, our, our, our only happy is for pedestrians, bicyclists, joggers, you know, being kids being pushed on the and all that. Uh, it feels comfortable. You can get a better look here, but that really enhances uh, the project. There's shade, there's greenery. There is a protection by the car really on the street. Uh, and it really, really makes a difference that we didn't have that before. Uh, the trees are because there is not enough room to have the cavities touch each other with one another. Uh, she had a very, very comment that the design guide calls for trees to, to grow and eventually have the cavities touch. Well, that's great if you're looking from the street, but if you're looking the other way, as in this view, if we don't have a cedar elm or something that has a column or growth habit, the building will forever go and grow into the side of the building uh, and, and require a lot of maintenance and then eventually the street will be removed. Cedar elm or something like that, we, we have not uh, had our landscape architect help us with that, but we'll find the right species of tree to really, really make that the most it can be. Uh, and this is still a process when we see blank areas that, that, that's going to be a retail store. Uh, this is the corner of Cherry Lamar. And so the idea of that wide landscape buffer and so forth will happen on both streets, uh, Cherry and Lamar. Ground floor treatment. Previously there was a, a, a parking garage behind the green screen, and so uh, we got the message. What you see here is retail, live, work, and the amenities for the apartment building. So these, these are uh, you know, one and a half story lofts that you see along Cherry, except for the end of the nice 24 inch square foot uh, retail space. And then on the other end, which you'll see here in the next slide, uh, that is the living room of the complex. So that'll have uh, sofas and chairs and activation. If anything's going on in the street, people inside are going to be able to observe and vice versa, which makes for a safer, more, more vibrant, active place. Uh, along the open uh, space pocket park side uh, is where you see the restaurant here on your on left, a vestibule in the middle, and the, as I said, the living room for the uh, center off to the right. And what you're seeing here for the park is a placeholder that we haven't designed. It. In fact, we'd we love to reach out to the community and have the community involved uh, in that process, especially if there's going to be a, a partnership with the city under the, under the bridge. So that really becomes a uh, meaningful uh, space, not just open green stuff. Uh, parking and access, we do have two entries off of uh, Lamar Street, and the first set of covered spaces, I want to say there's 12 spaces maybe, those are reserved for visitors, so people coming to uh, visit someone or shop at the retail center or sign up a lease or what have you, will have a place to park. Uh, further, uh, we've got uh, the 
parking at two levels, one at street level, one at ditch down, and goes under the living room building and the restaurant building. So there'll be extra parking underneath the building there, which is a great expense to mention. He wasn't happy about that. But understand as we can't have people parking in the neighborhoods and taking over. Uh, masking the street wall. Uh, you can see that the building is broken up into discernible masses so that it, uh, it reads more uh, in scale. That's one of the reasons that's out of the nine eyes. And as we uh, flip around here, you can kind of see the different uh, parts and pieces. There are terraces, there are setbacks, there's overhangs, lots of things to interplay with light and shadow, and you'll see them in the color as well. This is Lamar Street. So you can see a tall building over the corner in terms of the main street, and then it's broken up. Excuse me. Yes, sir. You mind going back to the previous slide? Right there. Uh, as, as you're facing this on the right hand side, your your uh, your plan view. Oh. It shows a parking lot. Uh, you told me when to stop there. Oh, right there. That, that's fine. Uh, your parking lot. Um, whose property is that? That's the I believe that's the Alamo Beer parking. Alamo Beer. That's parking for the brewery. Right. But if you allow me to spin around, <laughs> our parking is separated. Here we go. Come on, please. Let me go too fast for it. Essentially, you drive through those three openings and get to parking behind the building. I wish this is what we could show you our live preview model. <coughs> so, did you have a question with respect to the neighboring property or where we're parking? Oh, well, yes, my question. Okay. So, moving on to uh, outside open space, which we've uh, touched on already. As Preston, we're managing to be a vibrant community space for the, for the not just the development, but for the community and the neighborhood. Uh, and there's the coffee and there'll be all these different things that can happen. Uh, and so there you see the space and how you can notice how far pulled back the building is, this in particular uh, on the end. How far back is it? It's about, it depends on where you measure, it's about 64 feet in one place and a little bit less in the other where it's taller, the part where it's lower. 64 so feet from where it was before, before that open space was our open space? Sorry? 64 feet from the open space or 64 feet further back? 64 feet from the wall you see there to the property line, and then there's another uh, few feet before you actually get to the top bridge. And then if you notice, we pull that back from the street to open up the view and frame uh, okay. the views of the bridge. And then it pulls in about another eight feet, uh, where it's one story right there. And so from the face of that glass, it's, it's about eight feet less. Okay. But it's okay. also shorter. Well, it's shorter, but you've also increased the height, right? We increased the height of where it's open. Thank Sorry. you. That's a thing for making that point. Okay. You can't hear me? <laughs> the building is taller, except that, and we did that, we pulled back the building to where it's not four stories, but one story. Here where you see the section of glass where the right. rock will be. So you're correct. It's taller, but it's taller away from the bridge. <laughs> And lower. Well, with, I guess my question is, and is with that last design before, and I know you're the Google Magic fan, okay? So it was already 58, and that was fudging it a little bit that it was going to exceed the height of the bridge. What is it now? Okay. What is the height now? If I may correct you, before there were 53 feet between the building. And the other property line, there was going to be a building, a restaurant in the future, somehow installed there. Now you're going to have open space. So whereas before the concern was, what are we going to get? And we need to see what you're doing there, even though that wasn't our property. Actually, I think there were two concerns. That wasn't the only concern, the overall height. And how it related to the height of the bridge and the experience was also a question. Right. And I'm not sure. I understand what you're doing and I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not sure that fifth story 
clearly articulates how much forward is it than the bridge now? Oh, yeah. Uh, lots of detail we can get it for you, but I just want to make sure you understand the idea of why we're going to buy it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if we have a high free law, I can measure it for you. But it's not working. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Sorry. Um, my name is Amelia Valdez, and um, I'm the historic West Side Resident Association for the West Side. I'm born and raised in the West Side, but gave 20 years to the Boys and Girls Club in the East Side. Similar de development is going on on the West Side of San Antonio, now, now the East Side. Why, they, why do we have money going to the community of the East Side homes, like helping the folks with their houses? Why does this start putting us in a building that's going to block a lot of our great San Antonio? So my, my question is, this does not look like an East Side. The homes that you showed earlier, that was East Side, and you talked about the preservation of it. People work hard to keep their houses. So it just saddens me that East and West can, the developers continue to put us in high-rise buildings to block whatever they want to block. Thank you. Thank you. And so if I may continue with the open space, uh, and certainly... Uh, I do think, though, that, yeah, the, with regards to trying to respect exactly why you're here and to discuss the design, the height has the height been a question from day one. Well, so we're clear. Height is not a, uh, not a restriction. It is not, not a design guide. Okay. But we want to hear from you anyway. If, if, right. perhaps, if you're feeling that that doesn't feel like, or it doesn't feel like it's uh, an east side uh, neighborhood centric uh, type of design because of the height, or what have you. This is downtown, essentially. This is downtown. Well, it's actually, it's what, what we're it's hoping. Downtown. And I'm glad you brought this up. They're going to use the legal estate. So downtown or Well, and, and we respect that, but what we would really like to do is to see this group work together with the Costco's office and then we'd love to throw our head in ring as well, to really study uh, what parts of the neighborhood deserve more urban downtown buildings. This near east side interstitial industrial area, they won't be industrial forever, but what ought that be? We wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't in proximity to the bridge. Understood. So to, dis to, to deflect that, is disingenuous at best, and it's, no one's it is a problem. I welcome your comments, I mean, and, it's, and it's disingenuous not to, not, not to then observe. No, then you should come prepared with the height. If I may, with the height. This is preliminary, so okay. we respect your question, we'll get to it. But okay. there is a right on the part of the developer to do, to do the five stories. And we're only doing it because we're trying to respect the bridge. We're going to do that. That's how, now, whether or not that's successful or not, you're, you're going to let us know. All right. We have two people, one in the back and one in the I'm sorry. Yes. Would you help me by putting the elevation from Cherry Street on the screen and start closest to the bridge and say, here's this setback and it's one story. Here's the next section of the building and it's two story. Then here's the next section and it's four story. What, what is your question? Before we go through that, it's not a question. I'm asking you to put okay, the well, elevation. Would you, would you mind waiting until we get to the end of the presentation? Because of the, your questions may be answered. And then I'd love to come back and do exactly what you're asking. I'm sorry. You're, no, it's not a question. I'm asking to yeah, see yeah, the yeah, elevation from Chip. Would you mind uh, being patient and we'll get to the end of the design requirements and address them? Hopefully, your question or thoughts might be answered. And then I'd be happy to accommodate you. And so, what is the height? The height is 74 feet at its tallest okay. point. And that's where the grade drops. You said that the whole time. And the, you said 74? You said 74? The, the building is, is tallest at 74 feet. And to be clear, to answer your question, at the northwest corner, the property drops about six and a half feet. And that's why it's taller there. If, if the building's 74 feet tall, how high is the bridge? 58, so the building's going to be 20 feet higher than the top of the bridge. So, hello, the escapes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Raise your hand. Oh, 
you're, you're, you're trying to help? Are you with the microphone you're trying to help? Yes, she's asking. Okay. So th th that was not true. The building is 74 feet at its highest point, meaning where the northwest corner is, the property drops about six and a half feet. So to get to that point, you need to deduct six and a half feet from your 74 feet. And then it's all going to be scaled to the bridge. In other words, when you're standing at the bridge, it's not that high. And, and that is the point where we have a building that's lower. Was that your question? That's your question, Did I ask your question? Well, okay. okay, let me get to this then. I know there's a lot of, uh, and this is a long presentation. Uh, architectural detail, we are taking uh, at, the, uh, at the request of HCRC to employ bridge like details in some of the uh, steel work that we're showing here. Uh, we have uh, certainly brick, uh, brick reveals, uh, interplay of materials, and so forth. Uh, streetscape improvements, you know, we certainly would love to see a vibrant street all along Cherry, uh, but in general, it's, it's, it's what we discussed before. It's the sidewalks, it's the trees, it's the street lamps, the match the ones around the bridge, and things like that. You can see them there. Uh, the river walk, uh, that's not I'll go ahead and say that's not applicable. Do you agree? Uh, signage will come back with any uh, signage. With sustainable design, uh, the project is, is being held to the National Green Building Standard uh, for apartment buildings or multifamily buildings. So we're going to employ things like the orientation of the building, uh, sunscreens, uh, efficient appliances, light fixtures, etc. So uh, that's generally make sure that we're almost done. Public art. Uh, we're going to leave that to uh, hopefully the opportunity in the, uh, the park under the bridge and the open space to have a really, really thorough conversation. What should the public art be? Uh, Mr. Meyer, Mitch, owns several of these 1968 uh, era uh, gondolas and he'd like to install uh, around the property. That's because they're San Antonio and people miss seeing them. But that's that's not what we'll call qualified public art. That deserves a bigger broader discussion than we were able to do. So we'll, uh, we'll certainly reach out to you if, if you're willing to you know, work something out with respect to that park and, and opportunities in the future for public art is concerned. Are you guys offering public art or is it the city that's offering public art? Uh, it's the city's purview uh, more so, especially if that's a, a city park under the bridge. So we'll have to uh, address that at that point. So the city's going to pay for the art, so you pay artists that would be something you have to take up for the city. For now, we know it, it's one of the downtown design guides. That's why we're talking about it. But it's not really directly uh, uh, related to our project. But if there's the opportunity, I bet Mitch would like to contribute and all work together to make it something new. Well, why would Mitch pay for it? Why would the city pay for it? Because this, because this is private property, not public property. Although the pocket park is for the public, and so I think that would be give him uh, at least the, the pretense of, to be able to help. That makes sense. Uh, excuse me. I, I think where where especially you guys developers miss the point is that whenever you come into a community, it's a community already. So the major concern should be how can I do what I want to do while making sure I'm not screwing up everybody else's life. I mean, I'm sure I, everyone here knows developers are in business to make money. However, there are ways to do it. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. If you come in and first confront the people in the community, you together can develop a, pro a, a program that's beneficial to everybody. You can make your money and we can still have our community. But you guys don't come in like that. You make backroom deals, and not accusing you of this, of course, but that happens. We all know that happens. But we're not doing anything to really save our communities. And this is all these people want. They want a community that they can live in every day, raise their kids in. And when this kind of stuff happens, we don't have the opportunity to do that, because we don't have any say. And if we do say something, it don't really matter. It's not taken seriously. Thank you very much. Let me, let me make clear, in case it wasn't clear enough, that one slide where Mitch said, hey guys, we need to do a good job.
trying to carry some of the product and work with the community. Our hands, thanks to the government, are, are, are open. We invite good, relevant commentary. And some things we, we can affect, some things we can. Uh, but we'd like to leave here not being us and them, and being a we. Yes.
to ruin that view shed of that bridge. So that, that's the point. We can come back with another design and put another story and pull back and set back and do all this, but that view shed of that bridge is what we are losing. Now this is a, you know. What you're referring to is view, well, not view shed. Listen, is no well, view shed. well, however you want to yeah, break it down. Is it important Okay, we're not able to stand on that corner and see the bridge. How's that for distinction? And that's what everybody in here is upset about. No, we're not. That view, that view, that view. The people that, that view right there, the people that live across the street will not be able to see the bridge anymore. We don't care about the view to the downtown. This is our neighborhood view of that bridge, our neighborhood view of that bridge, not the view shut to the downtown, none of that stuff, okay? That's what keeps getting skimmed over by all of the pictures and all of the, all of the you know, fancy words. Let's clarify, you're not speaking for everyone. Yeah. 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 Just want to clarify. Okay, not speaking for everyone, fine. But for a lot of people in here, I apologize for that. But yes, I... And I might add that those of us who say we're not opposed to it live in the neighborhood. Yes, yes. I'm a And I still think that the Bill Element Dark House, and after they had the hearing at the brewery, somebody shot my front window out. I believe we're here to here? listen to the presentation. So can, can you be allowed to do that? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think y'all have inherited a bigger problem in your office with your uh, council has inherited a different problem as well. Uh, this problem started five years ago. It's not y'all's fault. You're in the position. You're just trying to do your job now at this point. But what people are trying to tell you is that there was original concerns from a larger, longer issue. And the fact that now there's community process in this, you're starting to hear that because there wasn't an effective community process before. You know, and, and, and this is the only reason why we're here now, and this is why it's so difficult because we've made it so far, and then now you have to hear how disappointing this is going to be for everybody like this. So the problem is, is that we have the opportunity to make mis fix the mistakes from the Hardberger era, from Mayor Ivy Taylor, that have allowed this to happen without this community involvement. Because really, if that wouldn't happen earlier, then we wouldn't be here today. So this is very frustrating for us to be here five years later and have to talk to a new person every time because you just want a better, better reform design that doesn't meet a park, a preservation of that view. You know, something that works with that bridge, not any of this structure, so. Well, I, I certainly appreciate what you're saying and uh, can't speak to the, the history or anything else. You guys know that better. You, you don't need me. Uh, I know it's a bitter bill. What we're trying to do is design the best project possible. And uh, I, I know it's hard to come to terms with that this is going to be the, 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 the case. As far as I understand, there, there's not any roadblock, anything that's going to obstruct the course of the project. But uh, you know, I just draw lines, and, and as my kids say, I color for a living. Uh, so you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. We want to listen. The charge has been handed down by, by uh, the leader of the project, uh, the owner, to, to, to listen to you and to do the best project we can together. The question is also. Awesome. So, I mean, like I said a long time ago, this is a very difficult project because we're behind an A-Bosley community. 
This happened many, many years ago. Um, and they were talking about a personal private owner that owns property. Now, how do we work together? That's what we're, our office trying to do with everybody that's in this room, is can we come to a compromise? Maybe not. I don't know. But we need to have this dialogue because it's never been had before. And I, really, I appreciate the developer, his uh, representation, coming out talking to people because this conversation, like I said, it's not happened. And that's what we want to make sure it happened because we're, we're in a very cross point era right now. And it's a very hard pill to swallow. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be very simple just to show you design. Because honestly, they didn't have to show anything. They could have taken the feedback from, from, from ATRC and then go back to ATRC. So they're doing but, but, but we worked with them. But we worked, we worked with the developer. So you need to come back and talk to the community and get their input. This is not the final product. This is not the final product. We don't want that product. Land swap. This land swap, they have to go on the swap. They want to go on the swap. It is a Well, I mean, okay. The way this meeting was set up is for them to get feedback on this. And the way that you keep on describing it, that it was public, that this is public response to this, there wasn't enough of that conversation about what alternatives are there other than building something. Okay. We need to have a deeper discussion about that. Well, we, like I said before, we talked to the city attorney, we looked at personal property value, we had that conversation. And if they're not willing to sell it, this is the point. This is the point. This is the point. This is the point. This been consulted before a damn architect made a design. That's the problem. This is not a final design, though. Please keep that in mind. It's not a final design. There's also a mic, so if we could please make sure that as you have commentary and questions that um, you raise your hand for the mic. We're not going to keep yelling out of order. Yeah. Or come up to the mic. This is still, I believe, the, this land thing that happened when they gave the GC one the property, basically, and then you sold it to them. I mean, is that still in litigation? Yes. So, why are you trying to rush this development through before it's even settled? I mean, because my concern is that once it's built, it's built, and I, personally, I think that's probably what you're trying to do is get it done. Because if you lose in litigation, and I can say, I'm sorry, it's built. I mean, so my question is, is why don't you just wait till the courts have decided what the direction this is going to go in? Thank you. Thank you. One thing, it has been decided. The appellate court decided. And then one of the parties appealed the case. Can I answer the question? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Here, take the mic. You want to come here? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. The case was adjudged at the appellate court level. And it wasn't a standing issue. It was an issue that you couldn't sue the city on that specific performance. They couldn't get the land back. That's what the court said. That's why they dismissed the case. Dismissed. Someone, one of the HR, I'm sorry, the H Street Bridge Group appealed, which is asking the Supreme Court to essentially reopen the case to say, is that correct? They haven't chosen that yet. It is not still in lit litigation in the traditional sense. It has been judged by the appellate court. We're not trying to rush anything to get something past it because this is an important point. Even if the Supreme Court were to take the case, even if the Supreme Court were to overturn that decision from the appellate court, it doesn't affect the fact that the land could have been sold. That was not what the, the, the original district court said. They said specific performance in terms of the money of the land, not the land itself. So even if the Supreme Court does get involved, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the fact that the land was sold. No. Nothing gets undone. We're not trying to rush anything because there's nothing to, un to rush past. Okay, so now for the true story. Oh. Or another point of view. <laughs> there was a memorandum of understanding between the City of San Antonio and the Hayes Street Bridge Restoration Group. That memorandum of understanding 
told, demanded of the restoration group to raise money to preserve the, the bridge. Because, and the Hay Street Restoration Group worked with the city to get $2.9 million from TxDOT. That meant that June Bradshaw with Daisy Bus Company donated buses to go to Austin, to Bobby Austin. And I, you know, we've got people, Marcy Inns, we've got Nettie Hinton, we've got Gary Houston, I don't know, other people in the restoration group. That was in 2000, 2001, 2002. That's when the land, the bridge gets $2.9 million. And then the restoration group raises another $200,000 cash in kind of the architects, of the, of the engineers, and the land, the land. And Marcy Inns and Nettie Hinton and Doug Stedman went and spoke to Dawson. So the lawsuit was challenging the fact that the city it just kind of forgot about that memorandum of understanding and then worked a deal with Eugene Seymour and the city. And as people said, basically $295,000 we're charging you Eugene Seymour, and guess what? We're giving you a grant for $295,000. So we went to court in 2012, and by 2014, a, a jury of our peers, people we didn't know, said the city breached the contract. 11 of those 12 jurors said you breached the contract, city of San Antonio, do best do good for your community. And that was a jury of our peers. The city then appealed it to the Fourth Court of Appeals. I remember asking Ron Nuremberg when he was a councilman, Ray Saldana, and Shirley Gonzalez. I said, why did you sell the land in December of 2014 to Eugene Seymour? And those three council people said, because we won the lawsuit. And I asked each of them individually, if you won the lawsuit, why did you appeal? And all three of them kind of looked blankly at me. So, yes, and at the Fourth Court of Appeals, the Fourth Court of Appeals, a very conservative, two Republicans, one Democrat, did say the city is key. There's the sovereign immunity clause. So they're saying they have the right to do whatever they want because they are the government. And that is an issue that is being challenged. The Texas Supreme Court is waiting on briefs by the Hay Street Restoration Group that are due this Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not sure which day. I thought it was February 8th. The lawyer working on that right now isn't here because she, for the since 2012, for free, as a pro bono attorney representing the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group, is working to submit probably a 100-page brief to this Texas Supreme Court. That's because we love that bridge. That's because we believe in government that honors community, respects community. People who donated years and years and years to save that bridge, a bridge that was going to be torn down by the city in the 1980s. You can look up all that history. It's in, the, it's in newspapers, it's in city files. And we're sad that the council just says development over anything else. You mentioned the Eiffel Tower. It is an icon that people didn't like in Paris, but now everybody loves it. It's the same thing. Nobody paid attention to the bridge until it was finally restored. And now everybody wants it and loves it. And we just want to make sure for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, that view is for everyone, not just for the people who live there in the apartments. You know, but for everyone, and that part was supposed to be that there was even 
parking spots for people, for, for, for student groups to be able to drive, yes, yeah, school buses to drive in and have children use it. The idea was it was going to also talk about trains and the history of trains in the east side. There's so much work that was done, and all we're asking is the respect of of the government, of our government. They talk about civic participation. And that's what that's what this group of people since the 80s did, gave up all that time for all of us to enjoy that bridge. And now we're just going to do what we've done to the pearl. Yeah, we may like the pearl, but we don't see the pearl anymore. The beautiful cathedral in the middle, you have to be inside there, go in there, and then only from one point can you see the pearl. But if you drive around, you don't see that. We don't want the same thing to happen here. And we want it, the bridge to be for everyone, not just for those who can live in the apartments or who can go into the very tiny pocket park, which is very, very tiny. Are you going to address 74 feet? Come on now, brother. We are moving that direction. Hopefully, in the interest of moving everyone together to the discussion I think you want to have, uh, I, I want to say a few things in response to what I say about uh, beautiful words. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and we're here today with a sincere hope to you know, have the obstacles art and that we you know, work together in making this the best it can be. I don't know much, but from what I said with my experience, as beautiful and moving as your words were, that we're going to see a building here, and we, we really need everyone's cooperation to make this a so, so, so those of you, hey, I, I don't know everything, I don't have a crystal ball, but what I do know is that if you don't work with us and join with us, we're going to miss out. And, and, and so, we're going to miss out. Okay. So, 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 with that, with that, can I see by a show of hands, how many people are willing to help us make this a better project, not make it go away? Okay, hold on. Go away. All right. All right, show of hands. Go away. That's fine. One table. Okay. How many people want to see it be a park and the views protected? Raise your hand. Somebody count. You don't need to count on the jar. You need to count on the 50. 50. Listen, Councilman Shaw. Let's go this direction for a minute. Just entertain me for a minute, okay? <laughs> there is every bit of likelihood that there may be a development there. Yeah. It, 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 I, I can't get into all that. But part of that conversation is you went up 24 feet. Let's talk about that part of 20 feet. And you knew it to begin with. So you're not coming off as honest as you, you pulled it up too quick unless somebody put it to you on a text. You knew it too quick. But hang on a minute. This is not your battle. This happens to be Councilman Shaw and District 2's lead. You have a multi-layer. The reason they keep taking a beating is because we can't have a voice except at this conversation. We have not been able to talk about the design because some of us can't get past the injustice. And the acknowledgement there was an injustice. You know more than likely if you took a strong poll at city council that more than half the new members say, yeah, ooh, that bridge. Who knew it was going to be that? All of us did. Who knew it? I must have had an idea 10 years ago. I went to the unveiling. If you've been around for a minute, you knew what they put into it. But then all of a sudden, we want to turn around and say, well, we can't because we're going to be sued. We get sued every day as a city. It's just a matter of saying, okay, what other solutions are there? You know why we can't sell today? We didn't give them a price. Did we give them any price? Did we get a group together and say, what's it going to take? Because somebody asked me, what do you want to sell it for? And I said, it's not for sale. And you know what they said to me? One of the oldest things in the world. Everything has a price. Right. Except the democratic process. That's why we're here. It doesn't have much to do with whether a developer or James McKnight, or he's a good developer or not. He's defending his client. That's what he's supposed to do. We need you to defend us and the process. 
the democratic process. Because there's a table full of folks over here that have a different opinion. If I didn't, if I wanted to do this in a vacuum, I would have been in the city five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We're counting on you. The democratic process is the issue. Not even the height of the building, because if we can get to that, we might be able to get to the height of the building. That's how it is. Yes, uh, excuse me, this is a question for both the developers and Mr. Cruz Shaw. So, uh, in the beginning of this presentation, you gave a series of uh, objectives um, of what you want to do, and I guess the motto would be really, and you mentioned this as well, with, uh, my, I guess the motto would be summarized, the fact that you really want to be a part of the East Side community, uh, you really want to blend in with the neighborhood, and do something that really benefits everybody. But um, in which way does this include affordable housing? Because, I mean, from what I'm understanding, uh, rent to these apartments will be a thousand plus dollars. That does not match the income level of your local East Side resident. Um, and you know, this is this is an increasing problem in uh, neighborhoods like the East Side. I mean, the real thing is, if you want to do this for the community. How is this benefiting the surrounding community, and is this really for the community, or is this for a target demographic and target income bracket that you're trying to bring into the neighborhood for uh, higher property prices? From, from a development standpoint, at least from an architect standpoint, this is a these are places where you rest your head, this is where you, you, know, uh, you know, live, shop, work. Uh, it's on preponderance of units are about a thousand dollars, which is on the lower end of market rate. Uh, and what you get as a community is the tax base. Every bit of those rent dollars go to pay taxes, they go to the schools, they go to the streets, they go to the lights, and all those sorts of things. So, 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 thank you. So, to answer your question, it does plenty for the community. And for those kids who grew up in the community, want to go to school, get a job, and still live in the community, here's a place for you. Well, that sounds nice, and it probably sounds good on paper that if it increases taxes, if you know people pay more taxes in the neighborhood, then it will increase the school system as well. But that only works if the people who've been living in the neighborhood still in the, live in the neighborhood. Because I've talked, I've uh, walked forward and forward in the neighborhood, I've talked to people, and they see what's going on. They see not just in terms of these apartments, but in terms of people who are trying to take advantage of the low cost in the area, and try to buy hundreds of thousand dollars of, uh, worth of property. And uh, people are being forced out. People who've been living there for generations are being forced out. People are seeing their neighbors have to leave, you know. I've seen uh, groups that work with uh, homeless people in the neighborhood. And they're being clashed with uh, people who've been moving in in a much higher income bracket than the average person in that neighborhood. So this definitely is not, cannot just be chalked up to. You know, oh, it's going to increase the neighborhood. It's going to make the neighborhood better because it's going to make the schools better. It's going to make you know tax uh, tax going to be paid higher in the area because the neighborhood might be better, but also the population of the neighborhood will be replaced, and that's the main problem. Yeah. People don't have to agree to disagree. This is an opportunity to bring new people and have people come back and a place for someone to have a. Efficiency urban apartment. This is Whereas before, yeah. where are they going to say? Now we're not displacing anyone. This is an undeveloped saw. You've been up there. I'm, I'm sure. There's not any houses there now. No one has to move out. And because it's supposed to be a park. It's not for, donated. As for buying uh, Bring to the city. land, that's sheet, that, those need. days are gone, I'm afraid. Uh, and that, that, uh, that's beyond the discussion here tonight. But points well taken. Thank you. But we can't say this. We have to uh, agree to disagree because it's not an opinion that people are having to move out of the neighborhood because of rising property prices and rising rent prices. That's exactly what these apartments are going to do with the extremely high, you know, the extremely high rent prices that they're trying to bring into the neighborhood. This is an opinion. This is a point of fact that people are suffering already in the neighborhood, as which, uh, you know, across with what y'all are trying to accomplish right now. Point well made. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Uh, anything about the design? And uh, just just so everyone's clear, uh, you know, we did reach out to the uh, Digging with the Hill Neighborhood Association, Mark, about three or so weeks ago, and so we're we're, we're not hiding. We're not 
uh, try to circumvent any payment process to talk about the design. Quite to the contrary, we, we've got another little policy. Uh, and if, if folks want to come on to the office and, and uh, roll out the sketch paper, we're happy to do that. I will say that this process, through all the interest and dialogue and action, and through the leadership of the councilmen, we have a better project. And hopefully by the time we're all done, this gets through HGMC, it'll be a great project. Excuse me. Come in. Also, we are ending at 7.15, so we only have room for about two more comments. And now I have to hear from uh, <laughs> City Councilman Shaw, please. I just want to suggest that a difference between this design and the original submittal is that this creates to the west side of the structure there more of an enclave which has turned its back on the neighborhood. It looks as if there, there actually will be space uh, that will be very private space, not visible across from the streets, uh, that will have uh, uh, the best view of all of the bridge. And related to the bridge uh, is uh, your Eiffel Tower point. Uh, Doug Stedman, who's a senior member of our uh, restoration group, uh, who is uh, uh, sort of the dean of the professional engineering community locally, has emphasized to all of us over and over again that this bridge uses some of the same construction techniques as the Eiffel Tower, and it predates the Eiffel Tower, which is one, another reason why so many of us feel that view to it would be protected. We have an engineering landmark here that we don't want to see obliterated. So, so thank you for your very focused comments. Uh, the previous design was a donut with one 60-foot section taken out of it. This is a C with one 100-foot section Pull back to one story. So but it's the open part of your seed that, that is. Well, before it was a donut, so it was an O before, which was more dense, more closed, less open. But thank you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was an hard time. I have been a lifelong resident of San Antonio. I was born and raised here. I'm not from the east side, I'm from the west side. Um, and I live in the north side right now. But my son is a photographer and he takes pictures on that bridge. You're going to screw that up. And I just want to say, I want to ask you a question. I heard you say something like, you might as well just join us in figuring out how to do it. Uh, I kind of feel like you're saying, I I'm, didn't say it that way. no, but that's what I understood you say. So I feel like you're kind of just saying, you're going to get raped, so you might as well sit back and we can enjoy it. <laughs> you, you said, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm used to all of this. I'm used to all of this. So that no one is, is mistaken. I said, my understanding of the situation is that this is going to move forward in observance of the rights of the property owner. No one's getting anything taken from them. Certainly not the word you use. And it's better that we work together to make this something we can be proud of, is what I said. I didn't say anything else. Okay, but basically you're please, saying, please. basically you're saying that it's gonna happen whether we want it to or not. So we might as well just put our answer. That's input. not basically that what I said. What I said is the developer has charged us to reach out and work with this group here. That's not what you're saying. But I'm just All asking for clarification. I believe, uh, I don't have a crystal ball, I said. I'm not the expert. I'm not, I'm not an attorney for sure. I believe this is going to move forward, and this is our opportunity to do a damn good development. A self That's not the same as what you were saying. A self-fulfilling prophecy is going to happen, whether you want it to happen or not. How many people want a project like this to move forward in this room? It's at the right height. <coughs> How many people want a project like this? Once again, there's a mic, and there's somebody at the mic, and we will let the person at the mic speak. Yes, I want to thank, first of all, all of you for coming and engaging in this process of caring about your community. It's very important that you're here. And I want to thank you all so much for your presentation, and I know you're getting well paid you know, to come up with this, this process, and I think that's great. 
However, I wanted to take it back as the original chairman of the K Street Bridge Restoration Group back in the early 2000s. Nobody cared about this bridge. Nobody cared about it. And we were very dedicated. I'm sure you know the people. We were very dedicated. I can't tell you the number of hours, volunteer hours, we spent trying to get this bridge renovated. The first meetings we had with the city council people, they wanted to fold the bridge up and store it away. Or move it close to closer to commerce where real people were. Real people were. They, you know, it was a scary place over there by the Street Bridge, you might remember. We still persevered for many years. And we raised a lot of money. And it was not easy because there are no constituents when you are trying to raise money for a bridge. Where do you get the money? But we kept going. And the city, every single time we reached the bar, the city would raise the bar. They were stunned that we kept at it. So finally, the bridge was renovated. We had a wonderful grand opening. As I said, it was like Christmas in July. It was so exciting. And then we started working on the park as I was one of the three members that went to go get the land dedicated for a park. So we spent a number of years working on the park development. And guess who was there? The city. <laughs> they sat with us at the table working on the park for years. And we had so many people come in, professionals, how to landscape it. Should we do a skateboard park? Should we do an homage to the trains and you know and, and backgrounds that you know reflected the trains? We spent years working on this. If we're finally up to 2000, I think 12, and something like in, uh, in the middle of the night, it was like ripped away from us because others saw an opportunity to make money on what we gave willingly for free. And in my point of view is that we went out, we even went on field trips to other bridges. We, were, we got so into it. We saw how beautiful they were when there was very little construction underneath of them. And it really just encouraged us more. So we think this ought to be, I'm going to go back to it. It was originally donated by the Dawsons for a park. And um, because none of us or have anything to gain from it. Not a single penny. We just felt it's the best for the neighborhood. And we don't have a lot of more landmarks left in San Antonio. That's right. That's right. We have, that's a very big point. And, and I want to say 50 years from now, are, you, are they gonna come in and give us another 200, 300, 400 million to get rid of all this? I mean, this is really special. And I'm not sure that Whoever owns this property shouldn't even have this property because it really was it was ripped out from un, out from under us. I don't think it's the best for our community to put this building in. I really think our best for the community is to have the new shed preserved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. together 
That's what we're trying to do here. But maybe this wasn't the right project to do that because of the history, Absolutely. because of the passion behind the bridge. Okay. But what we want to believe in that democratic process. That's why, we're here. That's why we're here this evening. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're going to kick us out at 15. I, I apologize. You can pass me once on the walk way out. I'm sorry. Okay? Thank you so much for being here. Like I said, it's a very passionate conversation. Thank you for being here. Sure. We will continue having fun going through the conversation. Work the last spot. We don't even talk about the time. Just regarding what you're doing with Street Bridge, um, this project is fundamentally disrespectful on a level that hasn't really been acknowledged yet. The bridge, like once upon a time, was created as a link for the working class, to keep communities of color to actually community and be able to support themselves and their families. Um, as such, this bridge just, and you see that legacy alive in this room, that's what people are talking about, that's why people are so passionate about it. Um, this project stands fundamentally disrespectful to that legacy, and that's why people are still going on now. Um, and this is especially relevant because San Antonio has actually the good rights of inequality. I mean, you had um, the anthropologist, Dr. Christine, trying to come out and say how inequality was segregated um, by virtue of this of all segregation that did affect the communities of color. And so this bridge is being erected despite that. It's focused, presented not as an agent of growth, like Sage, but an agent of invitation. And so that's what these people matter. I mean, you're talking about communities, but you're getting rid of this one. 